With the release of last year's Ryzen series of processors, AMD put themselves firmly back into competition with Intel in the CPU marketplace, offering an increased number of CPU cores versus the then current Cape Lake series of processors from Intel. Intel, of course, were subsequently forced to release Coffee Lake a little earlier than what they'd originally anticipated, and then AMD have countered since with the Zen Plus series of processors along with the 400 series motherboard refresh. The Zen Plus microarchitecture has numerous improvements, some thanks to the 12NM process, such as higher clock frequencies, but there are also numerous tweaks of the silicon itself, including higher bandwidth and reduced latencies on the cache. My name's Paul, and in this Regame Telecom video, we're going to be comparing the X470 motherboard against a B350 and investigating whether you're going to be losing performance by putting the latest and greatest AMD CPUs in an older 300 series board. Do note that the Ryzen 7 2700X as well as the MSI Gaming Plus motherboard that we're using in this review were review samples, but this is not a sponsored video, and the review samples have since gone back to MSI, and all opinions are our own. We're going to conduct our tests with a series of both synthetic and game benchmarks to see what type of performance difference you will experience between the two motherboard generations. Before we begin discussing the results, however, it's imperative to stress that there are certainly benefits to the 400 series, which is just simply not up for debate. The X470 series boards typically support higher memory clock speeds, Store MI is a free feature you can download for faster drive access, better VRMs and power distribution, along with idle power consumption being lower for the 400 series board, and of course, support for precision boost overdrive. But if you have a 300 series board currently that you're happy with, and let's say you're running a Ryzen 5 1600X and thinking of upgrading to the 2700X and would rather skip a platform upgrade until Intel or AMD release their next hardware generation, presumably next year, arguably a very viable strategy, then this video is for you. But if you're about to jump onto the AM4 platform, we would suggest you buy a 400 series board, such as the X470 Gaming Plus features in this video. By the way, we have a full review of this, which you can find in the video description. But suffice to say, for 130 US dollars, it's an excellent purchase for the money. Let's have a quick overview of the two systems used. They are identical other than the motherboards used. A Ryzen 7 2700X, the motherboard being the X 470 Gaming Plus or the B350 Tomahawk, both by MSI, the RAM being the Ballistics Tactical Elite 3000 MHz, we're running at 2800 for these tests, and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080, two SSDs, one being the Kingston HyperX Savage 240GB for the OS, and the second a Crucial MX300 750GB for the games, and the operating system is Windows 10 64 with the latest patches of course applied. We had the B350 motherboard on hand because of a press trip last year to AMD's headquarters for the Ryzen event. This motherboard was given to Amy by AMD when she was in the US along with the Ryzen 5 1600X and we have already disclosed this in the video on the channel but for newer viewers we wanted to be fully transparent. We could have used a BioStar board but it wasn't plugged in so it was just easier for us to use the MSI board in this particular instance. We also could not get our ballistic statical memory running at the same frequency on the B350 Tomahawk motherboard as we could with the X470 Gaming Plus. A clear advantage then for the 400 series board, but we decided to run our tester 2800MHz on both boards just for equality's sake. Fortunately, we know from our RAM speed testing, link in the video description, that in most application and games, 2800MHz won't impact performance too terribly. We run games at 1080p. At 720p, we could clearly see CPU and chipset limitations come closer into play, but honestly, running a GTX 1080 is just not realistic. We suspect that 1080p with this card is about the lowest resolution you're going to want to use in real day-to-day -day gameplay, and even then, if you were to plug this into a larger 1080p TV screen, you'd likely make use of downsampling anyway. We're grabbing two distinct sets of results here for both the X470 and the B350. The first is we're leaving the clock to manage its own frequencies by setting it to auto, and the second is that we're manually clocking the frequency of the CPU across all cores to 4 GHz. By doing this we hope to isolate any benefits of the X400 series board might have in boosting and demonstrate the performance if users opt to simply manually tweak clock speeds themselves. So, how about the results then? 
Our first port of call, as it so often is, would be Citibench R15, and the results are pretty closely tied. Single threaded results for the 2700X are higher with auto, a trend you'll spot throughout the various tests, as it allows the Ryzen 7 2700X to boost its clock speeds when just dealing with a few threads higher than manually setting the frequency to 4 GHz, but for all intents and purposes, the results are very similar to one another. Corona, which measures the time for rendering to be completed in minutes and seconds, shows there's basically no difference between the X470 or B350 boards. CPU-Z is another immensely popular benchmark, and the two locked results of the B350 and the X470 are identical, with the only outlier being the auto results of the X470, which does manage to edge ahead in both single and multi-threaded tests, thanks to the more aggressive boosts of the 400 series chipset. If you're going to set the clocks yourself, however, well, there's just no difference. Geekbench does continue this pattern as it asks your processor to perform a variety of different tasks, measuring speed of calculations, memory bandwidth, latency, and so on. Yet, of course, the results speak for themselves, as does W Prime, which has results so close to one another they're within the margin of error in reality. Synthetics are great, but what about the games? After all, that's what I suspect many of you actually care about. Well, we'll use the DirectX 12 executable of Ashes of the Singularity Escalation to kick us off. The X470 results are definitely a few frames per second ahead, but let's see if this trend continues. Batman, a DirectX 11 game, says no, and we can see there's no difference here. Going back to another DirectX 12 game, Hitman, as we can see we're in the realms of where the results are just identical, much like Rise of the Tomb Raider. We could certainly crank down the resolution to just 720p, pushing a larger gap between the results, a measure we took for our mode testing recently demonstrating the difference between SMT enabled and disabled and the impact of legacy mode, video linked in the video description, but these results are to measure if having a 300 series board affects your games and everyday productivity. A running a GTX 1080 or Vega 64 class card at only 720p is not something gamers are going to want to do. The key takeaway here is that X470 motherboards do offer a slight performance advantage over the B350, but the difference is generally subtle. So if you've already plonked down a lot of cash on a 300 series motherboard and you feel disinclined to rip apart your entire rig to change out the motherboard as well, well, just simply update your BIOS, sell your current processor, and then install the Ryzen 2700X or whatever you feel like. But with this all said, there are clear advantages with the 400 series board. Many 300 series boards did suffer from issues with getting RAM running at over 3000 MHz, and this is clearly not the case with the 400 series. This particular MSI board, the MSI Gaming Plus, managed to run at 3466 MHz out of the gate, which is a clear major upgrade from the 300 series. But if you are thinking of changing your RAM as well, then you will find the 400 series motherboards are much happier to comply with higher clock frequencies. Plus, don't forget that there are other advantages as well, such as higher bandwidth for PCIe devices, better power distribution, and many other things besides. Then, if you are buying a new rig, without a question, the 400 series motherboard is the way to go. But, if you're the owner of a current and existing rig, and let's say you have a Ryzen 3 and your scenario has changed and you need those additional CPU cores, and you can't justify plonking down the extra expense on a motherboard, or you simply just don't want the hassle of taking apart your rig, do know that the 300 series motherboard will be absolutely fine with a Ryzen 7 2700X. With all of that said, thanks very much for watching the video. We are, by the way, on Patreon. I try not to shout it out too much, but if you are interested in perhaps at least having a look at our page, well, you can find the link in the video description. Do know that we don't expect you to donate or anything like that, but if you did decide to throw us a dollar a month, we would be extremely grateful because it does help us to bring you content like this. But if you can't afford it or you simply just don't want to, don't feel bad. We do appreciate you just watching the video, sharing the content, and simply interacting with us. It means an awful lot. With all of that said, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.